Hi everyone, thank you for coming. So I'm happy to welcome Christophe that is going to talk about idiomatic uh, Kotlin microservices. Uh, please give him a warm welcome. Can you hear me? Yes. So nice and dry and warm in here and no free Wi-Fi. I guess it's the reason why most of us are, or some of you are using your laptop here. Still, if you want to pay attention to me, that would be nice. Otherwise, just do whatever you're doing. Um, how many of you actually are using Kotlin? Wow, love that. Nice. Who of you are using Kotlin as an Android developer? Uh, as a backend developer? Great. Something else? I mean, native? Anyone doing that? No, nah, thought so. Great. Um, Time is very limited and precious, therefore I will start right away. We're going to write a um, microservice. So just for the sake of, oh, I'm a little bit shaky and nervous. So just to give it a try, please excuse if I mistype anything. Yes, this works. Great success. Um, uh, what's the shortcut again here? Um, I'm a big fan of TDD, so test first approach, therefore I'll just go here. And I'm not going to use spec. I wanted to use spec, but it didn't feel right. It is like tailored to Kotlin, but honestly, I want to be honest, and therefore I use test and G because I just figured out it, it suits my needs better than JUnit or spec. So therefore, we're going to go here and say we've got a test application. Um, uh, we are firing a request and immediately store the result Woo. here. And so we can immediately take that respond and result and say the re response of the result, the status code should be equals to, um, come on, okay. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Can you read that? Code is readable? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, foo might not be a nice name. So when we get the root path, then 200, OK. Then return 200, OK. Let's give that a try. Can we? No, we can't. That's interesting. I can't collapse that import statement here. Anyway, it fails with actually null. So it doesn't fail with 404, which is strange because the implementation of Kater's test engine, so we are not spinning up a real HTTP server here. It's kind of a fake thing, therefore it's lightning fast. Everyone who has used Spring Boot, yeah, we know the pain of having integration tests and they take like for hours. Uh, Kater is quite fast because it doesn't actually spin up a web server, which comes with some drawbacks as well, to be honest. So we are going to actually start an embedded server here. We are using Netty for that purpose. And here, uh, just externalize the application configuration. We don't need you. And we need to tell Cater to not immediately die afterwards, so we tell him run as a daemon in the background. Definition of a routing. No REST controllers and weird things, just pure Kotlin. So we do have our lambdas here, the root to, why, why, why won't you work? Routing root, here, yes. Oh, he needed the, the second argument here. And when you get the get, we just re respond the call with some text here and say, hello, Fosdem. So run the test again. Drum rolls, bubba. Still null, meaning he can't find the endpoint. So what we have to do is we actually need to wire up our, let's do it like this, our test application context and tell the application context here to also configure the cater endpoint here. Run it again. Great success. Is everyone still following me? Yeah, it's like in school. Yeah, thank you. 
Are you still awake? Yes, great. So that's for Kator. It's like an amazingly lightweight, lightweight alternative to Spring, Spring Boot. I remember I gave a presentation about Spring more than 10 years ago. And I was announcing it as the lightweight alternative to EJBs, Enterprise Jesus Beans, the really heavyweight XML, you know, like really cumbersome. And it was spring, yeah, nice, quick and fast, and like really like I could actually enjoy writing applications with spring. Nowadays, spring is the heavyweight thing, slow, it can do everything, maybe nothing, can like it's holy, it's really heavy. So Kato for me is what spring used to be 10 years ago now. It's really nice. I love working with it. Add some magic. Um, how about something like Spring used to be a, sp uh, a Spring framework used to be a dependency injection framework. Nowadays, it's a Jesus. I can do everything. Silver bullet. Sorry for my bashing. I'm very much opinionated, so don't take me serious. So the way you register beans, no spring configuration, no annotation tree, like nowadays we in Java, we program in annotations, not in Java anymore. We used to program in XML, which is a, quite a little bit of an improvement. But in Kotlin, we actually can use code to configure our application. Now that's awesome. Imagine the possibilities, what we can do with code. Oh, maybe I should first uh, define some bean. Let's say you have a service and we read all models. Oh yeah, what's a model? Um, we just have a model, let's give it a name, it needs to be a property. So some dummy implementation of that service strip. So let's return, as it is a dummy, bless you. We return a model and give it some name, doesn't matter. So we bind that interface with that single, no, and pass it, actually we don't need to instantiate that guy, so make it an object class, nice. Uh, this here is, these are infix functions, uh, we don't need dots, reads like a novel. Um, uh, now I want to actually wire in here my code in guy, so just use default arguments, I need, don't need to pass it over there. I'm doing that for a reason you will see in a minute. Um, we just get the service by telling code in, give me some service. There is some lazy initialization here, and when we respond, we don't respond with a text actually, but we respond with the, all the models. So run the tests again. So, couldn't transform single list, so he is not capable of transforming this list of models into a JSON object. So let's just tell him how to do that. We are going to install a feature, a feature which is called content negotiation. And we've got several possibilities here, JSON and Jackson, and I would like to go pure Kotlin, and that's the Kotlin X serialization library. So that should be enough, right? So now he magically registered some things. Oh no, he still doesn't know how to do that. Can't locate argument less serializer. JetBrains claims that Kotlin is compatible to Java. Yes, this is true from a language perspective, from, but from a, from a framework perspective, that's due to the paradigm shift, that's not fully true. They, they came up with solutions, maybe more like hex, uh, with compiler plugins, they have a zero arc constructor, and to open up all my classes afterwards, you know, everything is fine, and suddenly compiler goes there and makes it open, like, wow. For me, that's a little bit like a smell, but anyway. So if you work with Hibernate, you also were already in the misery of having the need of introducing zero R constructors through some plugin, and bam. So much for Codein. Now, I actually would like to test that. Oh, fuck me. Sorry. I just didn't write the test first. It happens. Ah, yeah, blame me, blame me, please. This is, this is, this is really not good. So we could, of course, go there and, and assert on, on string level, and then, you know, you need to watch out for white space and stuff, so I don't want to do that. So I want to say it should be, hmm, hmm, how do we do that as a JSON? Let's just do it like this. You haven't seen anything. <laughs> and this is me cheating a little bit. 
Uh, this is an AZK. AZK is the K port of AZJ. Oh, wow. So creative. On a string, and it says, given that, you know, do some magic that expected should be transformed and there should be no extra arguments, it just will ignore all the white space and ordering and stuff. So <laughs> I just assume that this is already existing. Maybe the SFK library should, could use some uh, pull request to actually incorporate that extension function. It would be nice. So let's run the test again. You know, always fail first. Bam, it fails. Expected values, but got one. Yeah, can you please tell me which one you got? Hmm. Anyway, I know there's one object where, whose name is, I guess, X. Is it X? Yes. Great success. I don't like that. I don't like that there are implicit assumptions in the given part. There is something which is actually not in the, uh, in the then part, in the assert part. It doesn't show up in the given part. So we are going to change that. But first, I'd like to split those tests. So give them a stop service, then get root path, then return uh, proper JSON, whatever. Remember here, I passed in uh, an instance of codein, but I immediately used a default argument. Because now I can actually override my, in spring speak, uh, application context. We therefore extend the original codein part. We extend the original binding of a single bean. But in my test, I'm going to override it with a testable service. Um, and we will give it some model. So first of all, I need some model. Oopa. And the testable service is just a kind of a stop here. So it requires a list of models. It implements the service interface as well. Single expression method, nice. Ah, oh, that's so nice and shiny. I love Kotlin so much, that's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm in love with the language. Let's run it again. Ooh, what the fuck just happened here? Yeah, uh, we need to pass it a list. Actually, I don't like it to pass a list. You know, that's somehow weird. Maybe do some constructor magic here. Secondary constructor, which requires a var arc, and we call the same constructor, but just transform it to a list. Why won't you, why won't you work? You want the model, not the list model. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Wow, if I would have something to give away, you would get it now. You can have a sticker. Ah, too bad. Why won't it work? Uh, yeah, of course, because in my here, what I can do now is what I like way better is, come on, come on, auto completion. IntelliJ and Kotlin, it's not there yet. Java is still ahead. In my opinion, Java support IntelliJ is still superior than Kotlin's. Done. So I like that in my given part, I actually repeat what is asserted in the then part. And so the testing is in full control of what's going on. Code in, put into cater, everything lightning fast, everything Kotlin. <sighs> Brief. Seven more minutes. Um, the last nice thing I want to show you is exposed. Ten minutes. Oh, wow. It's even nicer. In that case, I can talk a little bit slower. <laughs> Exposed, it's JetBrains hibernate alternative, I would say. It's not really hibernate alternative, it's just a lightweight SQL, whatever it is. I'm not good with words, I just do writing code. That's what I love. Someone once told me at the beginning of my studies, you know, like dependency injection and inversion of control, that's awesome. And like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I really feel stupid now. And like two years later, I actually got to know the words, the buzzwords, like dependency injection. Like, yeah, I actually used it for years already. Like, fuck you. If I would have that known that like years ago, like, so I'm kind of bad with words, but I actually know them, but I don't know how to call it most of the time. So if you come up and someone is, you know, like playing cards and use all these buzzwords, just, yeah, whatever. 
So we have an implementation of the model repository, we call it the exposed model repo repository. It's a model repository. Uh, yeah, quite boring, we just do a read all again and we won't have a specific database object kind of type for the sake of simplicity. Maybe we're going to introduce it if there's still time. So I'm just going to cheat here, cut that here, paste it in here for the time being. And I actually want this service, which now needs to be a class because it will have a rest reference to our, let's call it repo. So it just delegates to the repo. Missing a value here, repo read all. So here, compiler, thank you. And that's interesting, I just say instance, you know, just figure out the type which is needed here and somehow do your magic. So I need to satisfy here. I'm again here doing no test first, shame on me. I maybe just run the test now. So we require a bean which he cannot find, I guess. So no binding found for model repository with bleh, strange single instance actually. So actually here he says binding the dummy service requires a model repository. So let's give him a model repository. I have no clue what's going to happen. Um, here missing some parentheses. Ah, compiler, I like statically typed languages so much. So this all goes through. Um, still, I'm a little bit concerned because actually there's, there's nothing happening here. There is no, no real database interaction going on. So how about defining the table, which is basically, oh, surprise, a table. And it is a varchar, and the, the, the table column should be named name and the length, whatever, something like 50. So in the implementation, rather than have our dummy implementation here, we can actually go and say the model table, select all, we need to transform this kind of result set into our model. And there's only one property, which is name. So we get back from the um, model table.name. So this is how you do a mapping. The select all gives you back a result row, a result set we used to call it back in the good old days, and just map it with this magic. Right, let's give it a run. Please call database connect. Oh yeah, let's do that. That's nice, thank you. So let's call it connect to database. Uh, database URL. I'm going to do some magic here again and immediately make it a default argument parameter. I don't want you to close immediately your connection. So please wait with that. Um, the URL and the driver, I use a H2 database. Of course, this needs to be invoked somewhere. So maybe when we start up the, the, the web server, we also start up the connection to the database. That should work, right? Bless you. Please call connect. Ooh, what's happening here? Oh yeah, test. We need to do that in the test as well because this is out of the scope of the test. The test is actually just starting up Kato with this Kato configuration. So really dirty. I, I would not recommend doing that in um, real test. This is just for the sake of demoing it here. Just want to use a different in-memory name here. Boo -boo. No transaction. Oh, well, then, then maybe he needs some transactional magic here. So we just go there and say transaction. Are we done yet? Come on, like step by step. No, we're not. There's still one more thing missing because he states, where is it? Table not existing. Table model not found. Yeah, then let's create the table model. Thank you. So we just, after we connected, immediately we're going to do a schema utils. This is just something you have to know and create model table. You do it once. Um, make it transactional, otherwise he will complain. Um, in my work project, I have implemented some class path scanning and it feels a little bit like Spring Boot again. Yes, to be honest, I annotate things and actually I use interfaces rather than annotations. So yeah, this is a one-time setup. 
Now, come on, come on, do it, do it. Done. Yeah, looking good so far. Connect to the database. We have our web server, we have our cater using Codein as a dependency injection framework with JSON serialization with the Codein X serialization library. It's the routing, quite straightforward. You can marshal our model into proper JSON. First services. Um, we don't have tests for the exposed model repository here. It would be nice to have some, but I decided not to do that. Something I personally like doing is instead of instantiating my, my value objects here manually, because I actually don't care what value is in there, so I'd rather go here and say any. And that's not possible. Okay, so we just say model.companion.any, make it a function so it's reusable test instances. Oh. Right? And that actually works. I didn't expect it to work, because usually what's necessary is to do this. But for some magical reason, I guess because of the serializable annotation, yes. Interesting, I didn't know that. I usually use Jackson, to be honest. Shame on me, I'm not using a pure Kotlin library. Maybe I will. So now we can go there, and this is kind of reusable test infrastructure, all this stuff, and I can rather go here and say model.any. That's also the, the way I do it with uh, transforming, mapping it from, from REST data transfer objects to domain objects to database objects. There are extension functions which can transform your model into different representations. Yes, I guess that's it. Um, this project is on GitHub. It's, of course, everything pure Kotlin, so the Gradle configuration is Kotlin here. So I can actually declare functions here. That's really nice. And I really like the build source directory here, because what I do here is I have an object which all my, with all my versions, because you might have encountered a problem in Gradle with the Kotlin DSL, that if you've got here a version number, you can't actually declare a version number here and reference it here because of the way Gradle is just designed, that's not possible. So you have to redeclare the Kotlin version two times, but having this thing actually solves the problem. Yes, I'm done. Thank you for your attention. I hope you understood. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, we have a couple of minutes for one or two questions. Simple questions. Yes. Hi. Uh, may I know your opinion about a uh, Kator versus Micronaut or uh, Quarkus frameworks? Thank you for asking about my opinion. I like that. <laughs> my opinion about Kator versus Micronaut and the other one I didn't get, but I think I also don't know it, which also applies to Micronaut. Therefore, my opinion is I go for Kator because I know it. It's from JetBrains. When I, when I look for microservices, uh, web frameworks, the first thing we popped up was Kator, and I think it's more popular, therefore. But it's highly biased, so please don't take my answer too seriously. Micronaut, I've heard about it, never used it, so I can't answer that. Still go for Kator. <laughs> Anyone? One more? People are leaving, people are coming. Otherwise, I will be here. If you feel like talk, chat, exchange, please feel free to approach me. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much.